It's that time of week again where I'm gonna share with you three dinner recipes that our family really loved and I think your family will enjoy too. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. We are starting out the week pretty strong. I'm excited about this one for multiple reasons. Number one, it's a healthy option. It does have some pasta in it, but not a lot of pasta. But because that pasta is in there, it's gonna make it seem like a full meal. So I really don't have to make any sides to go with it. This is a pesto turkey skillet and it's gonna be ready in about 30 minutes. Couple of things, the recipe calls for a cup of orzo. This is all the orzo I had left. We have like three fourths a cup, so we're just gonna go with it. The recipe also calls for corn and peas. I'm not the biggest fan of peas, so we're leaving the peas out just doing corn. And it calls for zucchini. We had three squash that were locally grown, and if I don't use them, they're gonna go bad. So squash and zucchini are pretty much the same thing, very similar, so that's what we're going with tonight. We're gonna start by boiling some water and cooking our orzo according to package directions. While our water comes up to temperature, I'm just gonna cut up my onion and my squash. In this large skillet, I've got one pound of ground turkey that I'm just gonna cook until it's no longer pink. While this is cooking, it says to season it with salt and pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and just use some anti-no-no's and then maybe a little extra pepper. Check me out over there. Trying to boil over. <laughs> okay, our turkey is done. It is no longer pink. I'm gonna remove it from the skillet for now. Now to my skillet, I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. And to our olive oil, I'm just gonna add in my diced onion. We're just gonna cook this onion for just a couple of minutes until it's pretty translucent. And then we'll add in some garlic too. Our onion is still cooking, but it's about time to take our pasta and drain it. I am gonna reserve about a half a cup of the pasta water though. We'll need that later. Okay, I'm just cooking this for another 30 seconds or so. I do have this down to about medium heat. I had it on medium high when I was cooking the meat, but I felt like it was a little too hot, so I turned it down. Now, we're gonna add in our squash or your zucchini. I am just cooking this squash long enough just to kind of make it soft. Might get a little bit of color on it. I'm gonna say maybe two to three minutes before we add in our corn. Okay, our corn is in, it was frozen, so we're just gonna give it a minute to heat through. This is a lot of yellow in mine. I kind of wish I had just got the zucchini, but just using up what I had. Our corn has heated through. Let's add our turkey back in. Now in with our turkey goes our drained orzo. Now it's time for our pasta water. So we've got about a half a cup of this pasta water that's going in. Now this is called a pesto skillet, so we need two to three tablespoons of pesto. I'm just using store-bought. You could do your own. I've made my own before and it was so good. But we're going the easy route this time. So I'm just gonna stir that all around. I'm gonna add one more tablespoon of pesto. And lastly, I've got about a quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add that in. And then it's gonna be time to eat. It smells so good. Wow, that pesto, mm -hmm. man. We love pesto. Great flavors in that. I love the rice with this. It's not rice. Or not rice, but it's the um, orzo. orzo. Yeah. Orzo pasta with this. With the pesto. Uh huh. A little bit of that sweet corn flavor. Uh mm huh. -hmm. And then the meat is seasoned really well. I love this. This is great. I love the squash in there. Okay. Well, mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in. Let's. Mm. Well, not. You know what I mean. I'll be back. Looks can be deceiving. I mean, it just, it doesn't look, not that it doesn't look appetizing, but it just doesn't have a lot of bright colors to it. But y'all? Man, this is absolutely amazing. You've got to try this. Lots of great flavor in this. You see what he ended up putting on it. The pesto <laughs> with the orzo. It is so good. This is a perfect summer dish. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all, before we jump into our second meal, I would like to thank Meeson for sponsoring today's video. I've worked with Meeson many times in the past. We've been using their knives in our kitchen for six to eight months now, and we love them. Meeson offers a wide variety of premium cookware and kitchenware that's both durable and it's chef approved. I have three of their knives and we've been loving all of them. Unlike a cheaper knife, a high quality knife is going to stay sharp longer, allow you to cut through anything in the kitchen with ease. It's gonna last a lifetime and in general, it's just gonna make your cooking experience a lot more fun. So my point is, it's worth investing in. And 
We had previously bought a very expensive knife, over double the cost of a Mison knife. And while I still have that knife here in my kitchen, I'm always reaching for my Mison knife over it. Mison really is the holy grail of knives. Their average customer rating is a 4.8 star out of five, and it's half the price of other high-end knives on the market. So a little bit about the knife world. It is kind of split into two major players. You've got German steel that is known for its durability and toughness and Japanese steel that is known for its razor sharp edge. Rather than picking a side, Misen went for it right down the middle and created an ultimate hybrid design. They went through 37 prototypes before they created the perfect knife. And when I say perfect, I mean, it feels great in my hand. It's a great weight. It has a unique sloped bolster, so it encourages the pinch grip. While most Western knives have edge angles of 25 degrees, they use a more accurate 15 degree angle for a noticeably sharper cutting face. So if you notice yourself getting frustrated when you're trying to cut up different things in the kitchen, chances are you don't have a quality knife. So this would be a great gift to yourself, but it's also wedding season. And if you are looking for the ultimate wedding gift that's not gonna break the bank, let me suggest a Meeson Chef's Knife. Also, I have the blue. It comes in several different colors. So just go check out their website. Their website is very easy to navigate and you can see all of their different options of different things that they offer. But keep in mind that this particular Chef's Knife is gonna be less than $65 with my code. It's a great gift for you or for someone else. So go check out their website. I've got it linked in the description box below. If you use the code MANDY, you're gonna save 20% off site-wide and you're gonna get free shipping when your order is over $75. Thank you again to Meeson for sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump into our second recipe. Tonight for dinner, we are making something I've never made before and I'm pretty excited about it. It is a Hawaiian chicken sheet pan meal. I'm gonna serve it with rice cauliflower on the side so it's gonna be low carb. And unlike last night's dinner, it's got a lot of bright colors. It just looks, it looks delicious to the eyes. I know it will be delicious to the taste too. Let's get started. Okay, to get started, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350. It's just Steven and I eating tonight, so I'm just using one large chicken breast that I've cut in half and then cubed. To this large bowl, I'm just gonna add all of my chicken breast chunks here. We're gonna season them. You can just use salt and pepper, or you can always use what I always use, which is the everything seasoning from Auntie Nono's. Just kinda toss that around. I'm also gonna drizzle it with about a tablespoon of avocado oil and toss that around. Now I'm gonna add my one half of a red onion that I have cut into large chunks, and my orange and red bell peppers that I cut into large chunks. Now the recipe calls for Hawaiian barbecue sauce. I could not find that, so I'm gonna go with just the sweet and spicy. I'm just gonna eyeball it, but you just need about a half a cup. All right, let's toss all of that together. I've got a baking sheet that I lined with parchment paper. We're just going to dump all of this out on here. I also sprayed the parchment paper with some avocado oil spread it out into one single layer. Okay, this is gonna go in the oven and then the last few minutes in the oven, we will add some pineapple chunks as well. This is going in at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. This is the riced cauliflower that I love. It comes from Sam's Club. I think you get four or five bags in a big bag. I love these. So just in case you were wondering what riced cauliflower I was using, this is it. Okay, with just a couple of minutes left on the timer, my chicken is pretty much done. I'm gonna add in some pineapple chunks. I did go ahead and drain this, and I'm just gonna stir it around, and we're gonna pop it back in the oven just to heat the pineapple through, and then it's gonna be time to eat. One last thing before we serve it, I'm gonna juice this lime all over the top. Okay, the chicken is tender. Mm-hmm. That's good. I made sure not to overcook it. That's something you wanna keep an eye on, y'all. You don't want, since it is chicken breast, you don't want it to get over about 165 degrees. That's perfect. Barbecue mm. flavor yeah. with the uh, pineapple. Crunch there. of the pepper and a little spice in there. There's some spice in there. There is. It's the barbecue sauce. It's called sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Definitely sweet and smoky flavor of okay. the barbecue sauce. Hawaiian-like, mm -hmm. right? With the pineapple? Mm-hmm. Well, good. I'm glad you mm. like it. I'm going to dig in and see what I think. I almost forgot to come on here and tell y'all what I thought. Oh, my word. It's so good. It's so light. This low carb option is perfect for a summer evening when you really don't want a heavy dinner. I love this. Okay, it's our third recipe and that means it's Subby Supper Night. Subby Supper just stands for Subscriber Supper, meaning one of my subscribers sent in a recipe. We found it 
to be appealing <laughs> and we're gonna give it a try. This one is called Deconstructed Taco Stuffed Peppers and it was submitted by Carly. Carly and her husband live in Iowa. They have a 15 month old daughter and she said that cooking and baking are her passions. She said she loves trying new recipes and she loves to travel to see new places with her husband and daughter. They also have a dog named Moose and I'm not gonna say this breed of dog right. I've never known how to say it. I think it's like the little, the wiener dogs, right? Is that what this is? It's a miniature Dachshund? How do you say that? I don't know. <laughs> but it doesn't matter how you say it. Moose for a tiny little dog, the name Moose for a tiny dog. I love it. That is so good. But thank you, Carly, for taking the time to send over this recipe. If you are interested in sending over a recipe for us to try, just check the description box below. I've got a link there to a Google form that you can fill out and submit. I'm going to get started by starting on the rice. One little tip, if you have some chicken broth, instead of just boiling your rice in water, boil it in chicken broth. I only had a cup left, so I'm gonna do one cup of water, one cup of chicken broth. That'll just give it just a little extra flavor. I really don't have a lot of chopping to do. Her recipe that she sent me did not have an onion, but we love onion, so I'm gonna add that in. But I've just got this one bell pepper that I need to dice. I'm not chopping up the entire onion, not even quite half, but I just wanna have that onion flavor in there. So I was over there chopping and my rice boiled over, but that's okay. We've got it under control now. <laughs> I've got this large skillet heated to about medium high heat and we are gonna add one pound of ground beef. So here you can season your ground beef if you would like. I'm just going to add just a little bit of garlic powder, not a lot because we're gonna be adding taco seasoning later and I know that has a lot of salt and it has garlic powder. It has all kinds of great spices in it, but it's up to you how you want to season your beef. Now that our beef is almost cooked through, I'm going to go ahead and add in our diced onion and bell pepper. Now I'm adding in one can of black beans that I did drain and rinse. One can of Rotel. I did not drain it. You can add in as much taco seasoning as you prefer. I've got maybe a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons. And at this point, you would add in corn as well. I thought I had corn on hand. I do not. So there's that. I used the last of our corn, the frozen corn, in the first meal this week. Okay, there's not a lot of liquid in here, so, and don't get me wrong, there's not supposed to be a lot of liquid, but I'm just going to add just a little bit of water that I added to the Rotel here, just so this can simmer for a good five minutes while our rice is finishing up. Okay, we have two minutes left on the rice. It's getting there. And y'all almost let me forget the best part, hello, is the cheese. I already had this on hand or else I would just shred my own, but since I have this, we're gonna use this. Calls for a half a cup of cheese to go in here. I'll probably do that and then we'll probably put more cheese on top when we serve it because. Do you want some cheese? You do? Yeah, okay, hold on. I said hold on. Ma'am. I'm coming with the cheese. It's coming. I told you. Y'all, I'm really excited right now. My rice is done, and you know what I just found in my fridge? I have one lime left. So I'm gonna add some lime juice to both this dish and to our rice just for a little more flavor. So he went into the office today. He just walked in the door, and this yeah. was on the table waiting for him. Man, it smells delicious. <laughs> oh yeah. It's looking good. That's delicious. Wait, hold up, stop. Now, commence. I meant to grab that earlier. I couldn't believe this could get any better. <laughs> Classic Tex-Mex flavors right here. It's so good. Does not disappoint. Cilantro, yeah. sour cream. Yeah. Wow. This is a repeat, or this is gonna be on repeat in mm. our house. I can see me making this numerous times. Carly, you rock. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. We had some really amazing meals this week. Give me a thumbs up if you thought so too. And if you plan on trying any of them, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to go check out Meeson. I've got them linked in the description box. If you use code Mandy, you're going to get 20% off site-wide. Plus you'll get free shipping when your order is over $75. Now is the perfect time to upgrade your knives in the kitchen and or purchase a gift for someone else. If you aren't subscribed already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Hit that red subscribe button before you go, and I will see y'all next time. Bye. Is it?
Hello. Yeah, that was pleasant. Okay. Are you ready? One more time. One more time. Y'all, every time, right before I hit record, he does that. <laughs> every single <laughs> time. What am I gonna say? Just standing here staring at a camera. <laughs> every time.